Let's do it. Let's go to our mailbag segment. So to celebrate one month of our pod <laughs> uh, we got to celebrate this Nuggets W over the Wolves, which is funny because I believe our first episode was after the Nuggets won game 80 against the Wolves in the regular season as well. But we asked the listeners to send us some questions. First softball, Will, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is black. <laughs> I just, I, if I could, I would wear all black every day, a black shirt and black pants or whatever, and just be like a little goth. But, I was just thinking that too. Cause I'm like, oh man, every time I come to the show, it feels like we're both wearing a black t-shirt. So let me try something different today. That's what uh, I was thinking. That's why I wore my Chelsea jersey. <laughs> and that's why I wear this red, but you'll probably see both of us in black pretty often. Mm-hmm. My favorite color is actually cerulean in particular but blue generally. I love Cerulean ever since Pokemon, Cerulean City. Love that name. Wish it was a real place, but I love that shade of blue. Okay, so which has been the most exciting series of the playoffs this series and why? This comes from El Boogie 808, by the way. And the, the color question came from Beanie Cap on Twitter. Yay, El Boogie. My 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 bestie, as we joke to each other. Um, I mean, if we end up winning this one, th- this one will be my favorite. But since we had such bad games in the first two, I'm going to say the Knicks Sixers was probably my favorite just because it was fun to watch, like, all those close games and down to the wire and some and some crazy shot making at the end. That was fun to watch. Yeah, I got to be basic and say Knicks Sixers as well. Um, as much as I hate Philly, I love watching their downfall. So, <laughs> um, and I and I do like that Knicks team. It's really unfortunate about their just like continuing, mm-hmm. like extending injury struggles uh, throughout the playoffs. But I would really love to see them have a run with a fully healthy roster next year because i think they could be really formidable in the east but yeah that that series was absolutely bonkers and i wouldn't have said it if they hadn't if the knicks hadn't won but they did so those games yeah, were exactly. <laughs> we had been co- i mean we covered like all, a majority of the knicks games in this postseason we don't do every game but i mean we touch on a lot of them but the knicks has been games that i feel like we've had to talk about uh, but last game, you know, they got blown out really badly by the Pacers. And I don't know that they're going to survive this series now with the injuries. So that is very sad for them. But it's been yeah. fun watching him. Okay. This one from Mile High Aki. Love Mile High Aki. My Chelsea brother. Probably my favorite, my favorite Twitter account. What is your favorite play, possession, or shot of the playoffs so far? Could be Nuggets series or not. Oh, oh God, I should have prepared for this and gone and thought about that. Wait, did KCP have, was KCP's transition dunk that was like awesome? Was that versus the Lakers? Like we had a huge comeback and, and was that in the playoffs where KCP? That was awesome a, tra- that was a KCP dunk? transition dunk. Yeah, that was a momentum shifter in that third quarter. I think it was in game two. I think then that's what I would say, because I just did not expect KCP to throw it down like that. And that like gave the Nuggets Neither did. So much, I think Tori and France so was the one trailing him on that play. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that was an awesome play. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, the crowd needed some energy. I think my favorite has to be the game two AG saving, I don't know, saving the oh, ball from out of bounds. Yeah. I think Jokic was trying to pass it to him, and he caught it, and then <laughs> caught it to MPJ, and MPJ hitting that three. That was that was the sequence of the playoffs, because we don't win that game if that we probably don't win that game if uh, MPJ isn't given the opportunity to tie the game after uh, that, like Jamal had that bad turnover or, or LeBron had that brilliant steal for the uh, transition dunk. And then that just these sequences that happen during these very chaotic moments are always I know. very wild right There's... and i'm sure like the knicks would like a knicks fan would say the same thing about the, yeah. the sequence that led to the divincenzo three to give them the lead in in game two as well crazy mm-hmm. game twos all right next what are the downstream effects of ag bringing the ball up the court i felt like it threw the defense completely out of sorts at times now we talked about this a little we well we talked about this a lot actually i think that um this is from big honey z is was more applicable in game three. I think that the Wolves were thrown by it, even though 
it was like the most obvious adjustment in the world. And I wish the Nuggets had gone to it since game one, really, because it was obvious mm-hmm. with Rudy guarding EG. Um, and it's something that we've done in other series where they try to put a rumor on AG and pressure Jamal and all of that stuff. In game four, I don't think that the Wolves are thrown by it because they saw it again throughout game three and went with this whole, like, we're pressuring literally everybody. He They weren't pressuring AG as much in game three, and now they, they, they were a lot more in game four and pressuring everybody else as well. So I don't, I wouldn't say that they were thrown by it, but I would say that they're unwavering commitment to ball pressure put them in some compromising positions like we talked about yeah it's funny we we hear a lot of talk about how the wolves were constructed specifically to stop the nuggets because they have these two you know they have the big bodies and cat and rudy so they have incredible interior de- defense but we have a point center and a point forward with ag and Jokic. so i just had confidence in their ability to beat them in this matchup uh i knew they were gonna roam off ag but i still have not put a ton of stock into that just because i mean we saw what happened in game four ag made him pay but it just from the outset puts them in a tough decision yeah it's like you said like did it throw them whatever we can what that's fine but it makes them have to choose because they don't want to have rudy out on the perimeter they want him in roaming in the paint so just from the outset, that puts them in a, in a weird spot that they're not super comfortable with because their success on the defensive end has to come from Rudy being in the interior. Otherwise, they're just kind of not as formidable. It's interesting because we talked a bit about how the playoffs are about overcoming the the, the situations that make you uncomfortable. And I think we were more talk about, talking about it offensively but defensively as well like you talked about how in the regular season you play your base schemes on on defense especially and you just run your normal offense but in the playoffs you do have to mix things up and be a bit more versatile in at least what you can execute competently let alone be effective at the things that you do that deviate from your from your baseline and I think it's not that the Wolves can't be competent at doing other things. Like we saw them mix things up a lot, especially against the Phoenix Suns, which is why I'm still expecting some uh, some more wrinkles to be thrown by them uh, at, at the Nuggets. Uh, you know, like some aggressive switching, some zone, whatever it is that they try to go to. But the Nuggets are much better equipped than the Phoenix Suns were at uh, yeah, exploiting it's... and figuring those things out. And so hopefully that does win out and they're able to win this series. But Minnesota is definitely not out of it especially if they can you know figure yeah. out how to be as effective they have basically have to be as effective defensively in in other coverages as they are in what they you know like to go to especially against this nuggets team yeah, um I, I, real quick since i may yeah. not have another chance to talk about this with the other games coming up and i don't know how they're gonna go but i do trust in the nuggets ability to be versatile and solve these problems and uh give more looks and solve more looks from the wolves than the wolves do so that i'm i feel bad that a bunch of people c- kind of pick the wolves after the first two games but how can you how can you not after what we saw so but right now i'm feeling really good and I you think feel bad win. that a bunch of people including us pick the yeah, wolves including, after including the first us. two games yeah. yeah i mean i don't feel bad it's just like i i feel great that they're proving me wrong so <laughs> yeah exactly. at least so far yes um game five is going to be crazy i think and it's gonna be really intense from both teams because it's a chance for the nuggets to finally lead in this series um and the wolves don't want to go down three two so Mm -hmm. or two three Mm -hmm. rather all right we got a question from nba chicken who says what position do you think should be prioritized this offseason a backup point guard or a center i would say point guard (laughs) i i feel like we've been able to get by on not having a better uh, backup center for so long that we're getting used to it but we have Aaron Gordon to play backup center in important minutes obviously in the regular season it really sucks to bring Jokic off the floor and we don't have that good backup big but um I just like I think the issues we're having with having fewer ball handlers especially with how the first two games of the series went and what we saw with having less ball handlers did I think it's like a glaring need at this point to 
get some more ball handlers and creators and such, but I don't know. Creation I think is important, but I would, I would actually prioritize backup center over backup point guard. I think we have some things in the pipeline in terms of creation and ball handling right now with between Julian and Pickett, especially right. Uh, We gave Colin some minutes this season. I don't think that he's going to be one of our two way contracts next year because Calvin is probably going to want to force Malone's hand at playing Jalen Pickett, who really didn't get much uh, opportunity at all this year. Um, And I think that, having a backup uh, center to save AG more than any is more important than Mm -hmm. not, not that it's more important than saving Jamal, but we have some other things that we can put there. If we actually got a backup center who had any kind of like any kind of passing ability, then we can sort of replicate with the bench, the play style of the starters um, or just someone who can screen really, because we just don't, we don't have like the base basic big functions off the bench in any lineup. So I would actually prioritize backup center over a backup point guard in particular, just because I think that we have some other options there, even if they're not great, we have them. We don't have another real option at backup center. Zeke is not a backup center and we can't like DeAndre Jordan is not playing uh, a ton more NBA minutes. And so I would differ from you there cool. all right next question is from isle of dog my take that everyone hates jamal is a natural shooting guard and should be played there nugs should get a more traditional point guard to play alongside him Jokic has talked about how much he loves playing with that type l take or no i'll let this you take this jamal is your you love him oh yeah I what love do you jamal. think what do you got? um i i don't think that like jamal is like the best at natural point guard stuff of anybody in the NBA, but I love him as a combo guard. The advantage to having him at that position, especially given his size is massive because it allows the nuggets to be plus size at every position. Like, can you imagine the wolves? If it was an ant at point guard, he's not as good of a passer as Jamal, for example, but it opens up more opportunities for um, more positionless play basically especially if everyone on the floor can screen and such it is helpful to have a another one on the floor who can handle the ball a little bit more that's not really kcp's strength but he's such a great defensive fit that uh that's what you would want there if we had a point guard playing it would we would have three guard lineups all the time now in those bench minutes i actually think it would be helpful to have a point guard because those benches are small anyway. And Jamal's a fine size too for those bench minutes, especially since we're playing switch all. I wouldn't want a smaller point guard, but someone like, you know, Jalen Pickett's not huge, but whatever. If he was playing that position, it would allow Jamal to play more off the ball and really unlock his um, scoring. That was his um, primary position when he played in college and he was an absolute flamethrower there. And we've seen how much getting him off the ball has been able to unlock him in, uh, in the playoffs, especially. And we saw it last year when you had Bruce handling primarily off the bench. So I don't think that you need a point guard necessarily, but just someone else that you can trust to initiate. And I don't know that uh, prioritizing a, even a TJ McConnell type who I would love to have on this team uh, over a backup center, as we just talked about, is the way to go because we have some other you know, options in that pipeline. We're also probably going to see some more uh, growth in that area from Julian, from Peyton, from Christian. And so I wouldn't necessarily uh, you know, prioritize a point guard. Definitely not with the starters and probably not with the bench. Yeah. Next, <clears throat> we have just... Uh, Two more questions, I believe. I'll check the other thread just to make sure. What counter adjustments do you think Minnesota will make coming into game five? And how do you think the, how do you expect the Nuggets will respond? I think they're going to do on offense. They're going to try to find ways to get Cat going because not that they want the ball to be out of Ant's hands, but I feel like Ant like will do what he does regardless. It's just, I mean, Cat has had some really bad games. 
And Ant was also a little bit gassed by the end of that game, too. Yeah. So, yeah, if he wasn't gassed and and if he got 50 or 55 or something, would that be enough to win? So I think on the offensive end, something to do with Cat. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I think it's going to be him scoring in the interior, uh, hopefully against like mismatched matches like Jamal or MPJ or something like that. So, yeah, we got away yeah. with KCP on him a bit much, and I don't think that Minnesota is going to allow that. It's kind of like in the Lakers series when we started putting KCP on LeBron, and I'm like, man, they spent like two games like letting us get away with that. But then, you know, LeBron started really punishing that consistently over the last two games of that series. The, the offensive stuff is easier to predict than the defensive stuff. I think mm-hmm. that there's more that Minnesota can do. But in terms of how I expect the Nuggets to respond, I mean, defensively, I think that Ant is still going to be the kind of primary, um, like, attention point. And they'll probably kind of adjust things based on how the game is going. I I think that for the most part, they've been okay with Ant going off as long as others aren't getting going. They're hard doubling both Ant and Cat in the post a lot. So they're not letting them be as, like, deliberate in their um side they're like mismatch attacking as either of them would like to be i think in terms of how the nuggets are going to respond to the wolves uh being more aggressive with especially cat in the interior i'm sure ant is also going to be is that they're going to be a lot more aggressive in doubling those guys i don't like the idea of leaving it up to shot variants on these role players the Wolves role players have had, have been pretty cold in the last couple of games, but we don't want to give them a chance to get hot. So when it comes to these aggressive coverages, I want us to be equally aggressive in rotating out or making sure when you're doubling, getting the ball out of their hands. Ideally, you're just like getting the ball in that situation and really forcing them to make really difficult passes um, and hopefully turning the ball over. Yeah. So... Uh, Okay, next question, and I think this is the last question. How do you guys think Maul's leg holds up? Oh, this is from Jonavon Jangle. How do you guys think Maul's leg holds up with these short rest days? Do you think he's adjusted the past few days or has or just been better? I don't know. It's probably a mix of both because he's talked about how he's going to need to adjust with it. Um, I think giving him some relief in bringing the ball up is good for his calf. I think, obviously, he looked the best he's looked coming off of that rest period and in, in coming into game three. He looked super fresh and explosive in ways that we hadn't seen in a bit. Uh, I think, so, uh, I would rather him have more rest, but I think, like, Jokic and other players prefer this every other day rhythm. They they like that. So, yeah, it's just you kind of have to take what you can from these shorter rests and be happy with it and hope that Jabal can just hang on. I mean, I'm a little worried. It's like after every game, he's like, oh, it was tightening up there. He was like kind of not looking so good at the end of game three and game four. But we still won those games pretty convincingly. I mean, it was still a, like it was getting closer towards the end of game four. But it's a good sign that we are looking this good despite his calf and i mean that half court shot he hit one leg on his calf we talked about it earlier in the episode i'm hoping that's a good sign but it's just so hard to predict i have no idea how how he feels yeah i think i'm just worried about it getting worse i think that he's mostly been fine in, especially the last few games since they had the a bit of a longer rest in the middle of the series i don't know just gotta trust the, the medical and training staff on that And he has tightened up toward the ends of these games. And I think it's fine as long as he's not pressing. Like, I don't want to see any more of Jamal trying to take Ant in isolation, either in the post or facing up, driving on him in late third quarter, late third quarter situations. And on the one that Ant blocked, I think Ant probably would have blocked it anyway because he's a ridiculous athlete. But Jamal also didn't get a ton of height going into that layup. He also didn't have like a ton of... um, like runway going into that. So it's not like he could have, I think he was kind of almost walking into the shot, but yeah, as long as he can play facilitator still, I feel okay about it. Yeah. But it's definitely something to watch. And like this series is by no means over. And it's not just because um, the wolves can maybe win a little bit more on the margins defensively, but 
Offensively, they still give us a ton of trouble. I do think that our defense has been getting better as the series has gone on, even though mm-hmm. we couldn't stop anybody yesterday. A large part of it is just like, let's not turn the ball over and give them everything in transition. Yeah, we really That worked to- for the last two games. Let's just keep that up at least. Just give us a, give ourselves a chance. And then hopefully it doesn't become a clutch game. And then we have to kind of pray for Jamal's calf to hold up with the, in those shot making situations. Mm-hmm. Although we did see it when he was probably, when his calf was probably at its worst in game five against the Lakers after he'd had a terrible series and he was mm-hmm. still hitting game winners over them. Yeah. But yeah, it's something to watch for sure. It's hard to imagine it completely healing as we go on just because he's playing a lot of minutes. These are grueling games, but he, I mean, he's kind of been technically improving as this playoffs has has gone on so i'm hoping it's either he's getting used to playing how he needs to play with this injury and or it is getting better so without saying a comp comp out kind of answer or just honest answer of like we have no idea i believe he's getting better and he's going to look even better as the playoffs go on i'm just going to say it straight up put it out there and hope it happens i am a little bit worried i mean he had some stupid passes and just bad turnovers at the end of the game so I need that to stop. But can Jamal just hit a floater ever? Like, oh, please, my gosh. Just please hit a floater. Like, so much of our problems would just be solved if he could just, even in the Lakers series in this series, just hit a freaking floater, man. Yeah, the floater game is uh, very weak with that one. He can only hit the tough shots. I know. It's like, like the weird jump shots. I think he had I seven know. points at half. And I'm like, what? It felt like 15 because every shot he, every, every shot he hit was tough. It was just... It was ridiculous. Yeah, it's been weird. I don't know if it's because he his, his legs are weakened. So on his jump shots, he's like really pushing it with his upper body. And then when he needs that nice touch for the floater, it's just gone because he's just used to like chucking it up with his hands and his wrists basically on these shots. I don't know what's going on there. but Yeah, but that's it for our mailbag. Do you have any final reflections on our first month of the podcast, Will? I mean, the podcast has been awesome. I appreciate everyone who's listened. Um, I'm glad that more people were exposed to Grace and her takes because uh, it, obviously your face wasn't out there as much. I'm like throwing her at all because I'm Elmo on Twitter. Yeah, so it's been that's been awesome. And the reception has been awesome. But I will say just that I hope the Nuggets realize what an opportunity this is because I think that the rest of the league looks fairly open. I mean, the Mavs have some injuries if they get past OKC. I think the Nuggets can beat them. I think the Nuggets can beat the Celtics if KP's limited. We've already proven we can beat them. And it's just like, if they can realize that they just need to win two more games against this Wolves team and just lock in and push through whatever it takes to just get this because... We have Wembenyama, we have Ant, and we have these young teams, and the the league is getting better, and people are going to retool again come this offseason, and it's just like, if we can get another one, just two in a row, and just get one in this Jokic era, in this window, it would just be massive, and I just hope they seize this opportunity that's in front of them, and not just, you know, succumb to the ex- exhaustion of of trying to repeat and defending the title because it's definitely a tall order but i know that they can do it they just got to realize it yeah i mean will going in full fan planning the legacy (laughs) mode there but Mm -hmm. i think obviously i I think the nuggets realize their opportunity my only questions left about the series are really about minnesota because it's not like last year when it was 2-2 tied against the Suns, you know, that this, Mm -hmm. that was like a, you have an opportunity here. It was all about, are the Nuggets going to be able to just get it done? Minnesota has a lot of agency in this as well. They're a very good team. They're a very good defensive team. They have a transcendent superstar right now in Anthony Edwards as he's playing in the playoffs. And if he continues to play like this and their supporting cast steps up, they can still win this series, obviously. I think that the Nuggets are going to continue to play well and hopefully just be able to counter whatever Minnesota throws at them. And the question is more, is it going to be enough for whatever counterpunch the Wolves are going to throw after the Nuggets were able to you know, tie this series up? So I'm willing to give a little bit more credit to our enemies. Um, so there's, there's still questions there. But that's what you know makes it exciting. It's also what gives me like... 
intense sickness before these games. Everyone who followed me on Twitter knows how I felt before game four. I'm glad they didn't go down 3-1, but I would also really love it if they won game five so that they could be the first team to win a home game in this series and give themselves multiple opportunities to close it out, although it would be great if they just won the next mm-hmm. two games. Uh, God, we just have a chance to do something really special, like down 0-2. Like, let's say we won four in a row, and then we went on and we repeated. Oh, God. I'm counting the chickens <laughs> before they hatch. You better believe it. So. Will is like, this would just be exquisite. God. It would just solve so many of my, like, my personal exactly. problems. <laughs> Your personal problems, yeah. Yes. Yeah, me too. It'd be nice to have, like, just a basking in the glow of everyone complimenting the Nuggets off season again. That was so fun. And that was so again, fun to experience uh, last year as a Nuggets fan. And after like repeating, it would just be even better. But yes. I know. And then we oh. could contribute to that dialogue too. It would just mm-hmm. be like this never ending circle jerk. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, about the Nuggets. If it doesn't work out the way we want it, at least we put up a really good fight, and we won those two away games, and we and we looked more like ourselves. So I'm happy about that too. Yes, I completely agree with that. Well, thank you, audience, for listening and or watching us make complete fools of ourselves on what's in a game today. Thanks for listening for the past month like subscribe share hit the notification bell leave us a review help us to keep growing the podcast we really appreciate everyone who listens and comments and interacts with us on twitter as well have our handles at the bottom of the screen we're on spotify we're on amazon music and everyone please remember winning is fun and losing sucks